This conference yeah, will now be recorded. So what the AWS has decided is that they formed a group. Okay, so these all the surveys will be grouped, formed under some service name. These all surveys will be formed under some service name. So, uh, so if, uh, the instance and the server level will be coming under the compute. Okay, so the storage, okay. storage, right? So we need to store some data or a huge volume of data will be stored somewhere. So we have few services for storage. It is S3, EFS, S3 Glacier, Storage Gateway, and Backup Service. It is latestly uh, uh, introduced to, from the AWS. Also okay. for database, for database, we have RDS, DynamoDB, Elastic Cache. These all the uh, uh, database uh, services available in uh, Amazon. This is a platform as a service because if you, you just you need to choose what flavor you need to install. You no need to install any commands to install their respective software. You just you need to click what uh, a flavor of that database you need. They will install for you. They, you no need to worry about the installation configuration of the database. They okay. will do all the installation and configuration from there and it is known as a platform as a service so database rds dynamodb and uh, elastic cash are all our platform as a service so we just need to uh, uh, integrate with the application that's it so we no need to worry about the installation or any stuff because all the uh, backend will be taken care of by aws so we also have a migration service so uh, we need a migration service actually uh, to move from the data center to the AWS these all the service will help us to migrate our data or content application database from data centers to AWS so these uh, services will be helping for us and we also have a network and content delivery so network to to launch a server, basically we need a network structure. Right? We need a private IP, we need a public IP. So all will be decided in this network and content delivery. We also have uh, machine learning and all too high uh, knowledge to be there. So, the, but they have multiple services for machine learning. So uh, recently they have launched a lot of services in machine learning due to the technology development in that. So. Now, a lot of companies are using machine learning in their application to enhance their application, uh, which will be uh, very performance oriented and also analytical oriented. So machine learning will be used in that scenario. Uh, we also have a developer tools. Basically, what developers will do, they will develop a code, they will commit to the, some repository, then they will uh, build that repository from that code then they will push to the server. These all activities previously done by Jenkins. So what AWS is providing is they are alternating Jenkins via these services. We can also do the same Jenkins activities with this developers tools. Okay, so we also have a, a application integrated. So in some application what they will do is lot of SMS or uh, emails will be generated. Okay, so when you are logging to a new account, what it will ask, it will ask for an email ID. Once you are enter your email ID, it will keep on sending you notifications from that to your email ID, right? Mm -hmm. So this application integration part will be taken care of that. We have a, a, a CS and SNS, so I will explain you in future, but it is for general, uh, information for you so how what are the categories there in aws so this all service will be integrated in your application to to make your application function in all the uh, aspect so it will send the email it will send a notification it will send the sms you will also get a uh, sms notification right if someone is wrong password in your uh, uh, your uh, Facebook account or Gmail account, you will be initially triggered to a SMS or a email notification. These all will be integrated with the help of these services. 
the uh, virtual reality also we have a service called sumerian so what they will do is they will uh, we can able to create a cartoon character and we can able to do all kind of stuff so the vr service called sumerian and we can also have a mobile activity and we also uh, have a internet of things and security and lot of stuff for analytics is mainly concentrated now so all the business are based on the analytic of data okay we have n number of services okay so to start with aws we need to mainly concentrate on the first service called iam okay iam is nothing but identity and access management okay so what do you understand what iam means i identity and access management from that what you understand uh, sham uh some related to security i guess or trying to access something let's say you need a uh, id and password to log into your email exactly. or something like that exactly exactly it is nothing but we have account right data this account to maintain the account we will we are we will manage the account with the help of this service only to create a new user to change the password of the user to create a ap call for the respective user to create a group for that user so all the management and uh, uh, so to manage this account we are using iam so do you understand uh from the word identity and access management so yes, it will like ask for admin more like an admin stuff i exactly. guess exactly yeah exactly if we are admin for aws we will create if there is a development team there will be a testing team there will be a ui team right we will create right. a separate group for each uh, category and we will add the respective users in that group Okay. developer team will act will have access only to specific service they can access only the compute service i will what i will do is i will restrict all other service to them even though they are logging to the console they can able to access only uh, ec2 console we are restricting the user with help of this iam in for testing thing i will give some specific privilege for a ui team i will give some specific privilege we can also do a fine grain level restrictions user can access only one server user can access only one service so we can able to do a fine grain uh, restriction for the users uh, so okay. this, uh, this this will be completely done with iam so as a, we will be administrator right even you complete you get a job you will be definitely a administrator of the aws account and you will be the uh, intra architect so we need to decide what permission should be given to the users how okay. frequently the password should be changed so we should concentrate on that part so uh, this is the console for uh, iam can you able to see right so it just uh, iam resources nothing yes. but a user role and group identity provider and custom managed policies so i'll explain one by one to you now okay, okay. so yeah so it, i went to the uh, tab called the user now so i am creating a user for you sham mm -hmm. so what next step it is asking is a programmatical or a database console there are two type of access can be provided to a user sham so one is okay. programmatical what it mean is they won't actually log into the server at all okay. actually log into the console they no need any console access ui access what they will do is uh, if you give a programmatic access it will generate your access key and secret key for that user you understand that right? what is access key and secret key is nothing but an encrypted password okay access key yeah. okay so if i uh, if the if, if the user is a developer 
I no need to give them a console access. You no need to go and check any console of the AWS. What I will do is I will just generate an access key, secret key, and share with them. Okay. What he will do is he will configure this access key, secret key in the server which he is working. He can use any SDK model. For Python, it is Boto three. For Java, different SDK. You can he, the developer use the SDK to create an instance. He, he, there is no need to launch an instance via console. He be can able to launch the instance via API call also. Okay. API call is nothing but there will be a CLI command. If you uh, run that CLI command, uh, it will automatically launch an instance in the console. That's all. But to launch that, we need a programmatic access. Okay. So okay. Uh, developers mostly we will give their programmatic access for management people, right? So you for you you will there will be a manager for you. Okay. For that person, I no need to give a access key secret key because he is not going to do any coding part. So he is going to only manage the console. What? The managers will actually do is they will work on the billing parts. Mm -hmm. Okay, understood. So they need only the console access. They will log in to AWS. They will go to the billing part. They will check the billing details. That's all. The, they no need any programmatic access at all. They no okay, need so any let's, access. Let's say you give yeah. someone the AWS management console access and someone programmatic access so they can't be accessing the programmatic accessor won't be able to access the management console. console and the manager console won't be access won't be able to access the programmatic access is that exactly correct? yes okay. exactly yes if you need a user both we will do both activities right we, we are architect we also will write ports to manage the aws we will also do all types in console what we will do is we will enable both content for us we will do programmatic we will also do a console level management so, so we have selected that is possible so like you can give access like both access to a user yeah we can be able to yes okay because as an administrator we will do both activities right we will check in console also we will also write codes to uh launch some servers so we will do both activities so okay. we will need both uh both should be enabled for that okay you are clear on that right what is programmatic access what is management control access uh -huh. i have one question though yeah let's say you start a project and give user uh like uh, access and in future if you want to change the access, is it possible to do that too? Yeah, we can able to disable. Yes, we can able to disable a programmatic access. We can able to disable the console access. We can able to. Yes. Okay. I will show that now. We can go step by step. So this is the first phase, right? We can also add multiple users in same tab. You can able to okay. see, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. So currently we can create yeah. <coughs> next what it is asking is this sham should be added to any group. It is a developer group or a testing group or an AWS administrator group. It is asking do I need to add this user to any group or create any group. Okay, I'm creating a group. What group it is it is AWS admin group okay mm -hmm. so i'm creating a group so uh, uh uh okay so we have created a group called aws admin okay so we have a policies in aws now okay we have a, it is nothing but the permissions mostly we will have administrator permission okay for okay. specific user we can we need to only give ec2 means we can select EC2. Can you able to see? I'm only just selecting EC2 yeah. full access. Full access, okay. So this is a fine grain access. We can give only to specific service. Also, we can do only read only to that specific group. 
people in this group uh, we, there will be training right trainers will be there right for them i need to give only read only access okay i can able to do that also this is easy to read only you can able to okay, see right okay. yeah he won't be read. able to make any changes just like view yeah, what in the anything just view the console there won't be action won't be permitted okay so what i will do is in training group i will add few users and i will give this easy to read only policy and i will create a group okay so what i am doing is i am adding you in aws admin with easy to read only permission okay understood right yes good we can also do a if already multiple users are there i can also copy permission from that respective users okay okay also we can able to attach existing direct policy that, that that is nothing but same we need to we can also uh sham uh i will let, let me finish that first then we can go how to create a policy okay so it will be a bit confusing so okay. let me finish finish this up so i am giving administrator next one is tag it is optional there is no need but we can able to tag also next is we are reviewing what it is saying the username is sham access is programmatical and aws console access console password will be auto generated okay uh, we need to uh, reset the password okay it will generate some password bro so once a password is generated i will be sharing with you once you log in with the password it will forcefully tell you to reset okay so you can set your password on your own okay so so it is the policy is aws administrator access and i am giving you i am user change password access without this we can't be able to change your password i am user change password okay this is a specific policy okay so okay. i am creating a user for you so what it is showing it is showing the access key this is showing the password this is console password sha this one is console password okay this access key secret we will be configured in application coding level okay so it's basically using the hash function i guess that is what i learned in security class mm -hmm. yeah okay so this once we configure in server we can do any activities if you have privileges i can able to create a server i can able to delete a server so all kind of activities i can able to do with this access key secret key if it is having proper policies if it is having administrator access i can do all stuffs in code level itself okay okay so it will also ask for download the csv if i download the csv what it will contains it will have all the same details okay so username is sham and mm -hmm. uh, uh password is something so you help of username password you can able to uh, log into the console with help of access key secret key you can do the apa level uh, triggers apa level is nothing but the coding we can able to launch a server delete a server create a vpc all stuffs will be done with help of the uh python script or java script or ruby and rails all kind of scripts we can able to work on aws and this is a console if you give this uh uh login console it will ask for username password once you give your mm -hmm. sham and password you can able to log into the console okay you're pretty uh, okay right so you can able to understand right till now what we are done yes yes good so we will go for group now 
so we already created a aws admin but there is no user added because i have changed it in the last time so what i'm doing is i'm adding sham to it <coughs> so now aws admin is having username sham okay okay we can also remove or add a user to that respective groups why we are creating group is i will not give policies to each user i will give the policies to the respective group and i will add the user to the group because all the uh, user will be sticking to that group so i no need okay, to individually so go and like this yeah exactly okay yeah, yeah they will be doing the same policy okay. as a group yes okay okay so next is we are having role okay mm -hmm. what is role in aws is okay we have a two services let, let me consider there is a uh, 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 ec2 server we are having a ec2 server and we are having a s3 storage okay i need to access that s3 bucket from my ec2 server okay so to communicate between two different services to communicate between two different services there there should be permission should be provided for them okay i do i, I need to contact some s3 service because ec2 is different s3 is two different services right but uh, i need to communicate uh, s3 from ec2 i need to give privileges to that ec2 server do you understand it, it is confusing no i got it got it right so what the role will do is i am creating a role it is asking from which service we are going to access so i am telling i am going to access from ec2 it will ask to which service you are going to do what permission you need for that i am need only to access s3 so what i am giving i am giving s3 full access okay so i need to access different service what i can say rds rds is a database right so i need to access from ec2 to rds there should be communication so what i am giving is privileges rds okay. if i give admin access that from that server i can do all administrator access all admin activities i can create a server delete a server i can create a rds delete a rds so all service i can able to access from that only from that server okay so, uh, what i will do is i will attach this role to that respective server that's all i will attach this role to that server this role will having the permission what permission whether it need to access s3 it need to access ec2 it need to access uh, rds i will decide in this policy so i what i will do i will give administrator next okay the name for that giving name is admin access i am reviewing it what is the role name is admin access only mm -hmm. so role description is nothing but allow ec2 instance to call aws service on your behalf you, so you can now understand right i am allowing this ec2 instance to access what permission i am policy i am attaching to i am only i am attaching s3 policy from that ec2 instance i can able to access only the s3 if okay. i am giving rds only i can you only access rds if it is a read only i can get only the data i can't do any changes to that rds so this is the thing for role so okay i am creating a role this is known as custom role uh, sham already we will have a lot of roles in that by default we'll have as roles Okay. role for auto scaling role for code so we are creating a custom role this is the role we have created if we go into that 
we can able to see what is a permission for that code. Permission okay. is nothing but the policies. Policy will decide what permission should be provided. So I am giving the attaching the policies of RDS, S3, full access, and administrator. We can also remove if we know it in a policy here. Okay. There is a concept called trust uh, relationship. Okay. From which resource you have, we are going to access it? We are going to access from EC2, right? Mm -hmm. So the trust policy will be ec2.amazon.com. If I am accessing this world for, for, for the Lambda, what it will be is lambda.amazonaws.com. So from which you are going to access this role will be the trust relationship. Okay. You got it? Yes. Okay, pretty good. We can also having our access advisors. So what are the permissions we have provided? So it RDS is having full permission. We can also check when it is last accessed. From my server, I'm creating an instance, okay? We can able to track here. So uh, which role policy is accessed when? It will show in this time it is used. In this time it is used. So we can able to see the results. Okay. Is it, it is just a tracking. If you need any uh, going to, from this role, someone has created a server. You need to check from what will what time it is uh, launched. We can go and check here. It will be showing this role is accessed in uh, last one hour. In last one hour, it is accessed. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. We can. Uh, there is a, a session called revoke session. Okay. AWS is having a token system, Sham. So. If this role is accessing right for security reason, what they have done is the token system will change very frequently. The uh, it is like an encryption, right? So the uh, communication between two services will happen via the token system. What why they have created this is suppose hacker there, right? Uh, you are mm -hmm. having full privilege to a uh, particular server, but it is uh, exposed to the hacker. What the hacker will do is he can able to create all the resources in the account. What he will do is he'll spin up all the servers, RDS, EC2, high scale servers. You will sp uh, spike our build and you'll go up. For that time, we need to go and check uh, uh, which role is accessed. We need what uh, to, uh, to make him uh, to stop the activity of uh, hacker. What we, we will do is will what we'll do is we'll just do a revoke activity session active session once we have done this the communication between the two service or all the service will be stopped he can't do any action from that particular server from then it is a kind it is a kind of revoking all the sessions the server is generating to communicate okay you got it uh-huh if you see uh, read this you can able to understand better the policy immediately deny all uh, deny access to all current active session from this rule this rule will always if you generating if you're commenting communicating to rds a token will be generated okay once every time you are uh, communicating your token will be generated the uh, token will be established for a few uh, times. So it, I will give more details on that. So currently I will explain in uh, verbal. So the token will have some expiration date. So once uh, it, it is generated, it will take six hours, sometimes it will take 12 hours. But the communication has happened, right? You can able to do all activities. To stop that uh, connection, what we'll do is revoke that session means the connection between two will be stopped. The token will not be generated for some time. So okay. we can't perform any activity from that server. This is for security reason. This. 
So basically, you are stopping the server. You mean? Not server. The action from that server. The role will not do any action from that server. Oh, uh, okay, okay. We we can't do that stopping of the server, but we can do the role action should be stopped. Okay. I'll share you the links for that to to get a more idea because uh it will it is a toughest part to understand in this IAM how it is working. I will let you know and I will share you the link. So once you go through, if you have any doubt, we can discuss it next. Sure. Okay. Very good. So we have policies next. So policy we will have a default policy for all the services. There will be read permission. There will be only for specific actions. We can also create a policy, custom policy. I am choosing a service. What I am going to do is in EC2, I am going to give permission only to start a server, not to stop it. Okay. Do you understand that? I can do each action of that EC2. You can uh, some user. We can deny permission to delete instance. If you give EC2 full permission, you can do all the actions, right? Right. So to stop the user to do some functionality work, we will do a we will create a policy called custom policy. In that custom policy, we what we will do is this user can only be able to start a server. He can't stop a server or delete a server. He can't do any other actions. Okay. We have a, 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 a site for that to generate the policy. AWS policy generator. If you type that in Google, first one will get as a AWS policy generator. Okay. In that, what it is asking is, you can able to see right, Sham. Yes, Select the policy. So what we are doing is we are creating IAM policy, right? I am mm -hmm. creating IAM policy. I am going to deny the user to stop the server. Okay. So okay. I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to EC2. Mm -hmm. So. I have selected Amazon EC2 in that action. Stop instance. I have selected stop and the terminate instance. The user should not do both the actions. Uh, if you give me a minute. So what I'm telling is, Sham, this uh -huh. is ARX Amazon resource name, uh, Sham. Okay. Every service, every uh, uh, thing will have a ARN. If you create a instance, it will have a ARN. If you create a S3 bucket, it will have a ARN. It is a ID for AWS. Okay. So I've created a user for you, right? It is having a ARN. So what I'm doing is it is asking, Okay, I, what I need to do, I need to deny for which server service it is easy to for which action I have selected the terminate of the instant for which ARN it will ask. We can also do star. So star will apply for all the users or all the services, but we can also restrict to a specific resource. ARN, uh, 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 all the stuffs we can able to do in a minute. Since it is IAM policy, we can do a uh, EC2 level restrictions. I'll go to the EC2.
so this is you can see able to see the pattern right sham this is the pattern yes. so it's arn aws ec2 which region account resource type and resource path if you mention all stuffs and add to the statement and generate policy it will be generating a json you have any knowledge in json uh i'm sorry which one json tech uh, script is it javascript it's a json it's kind of json is a uh, yaml json is Hello? kind of uh, you can able to hear me right Hello. Hello. Hello, Sham, you there? Avi Pravin, uh, his mic is not working properly, I think. Okay. Uh, please wait on the line. Hello. Yeah, Asham. Can yeah, you hear me? Yes. That was a okay. sound server okay. issue. So, okay. So, yeah, uh, in AWS, all the policy will be generated in the type of JSON. J it is a language. JSON is a language. Okay. So uh, it will be generated in JSON format. Once it is generated, what we can do is we can copy. Just we can uh, we can go into policy, create a policy. There's a tab called JSON, right? Uh huh. I'll click on it, and I will paste here, and I will review policy. It will ask. Uh, uh, stop terminate um, deny so this is the policy right so we are doing is uh, deny for a stop and terminate of ec2 instance and i'm creating it so it is created okay in filtered, we can able to see the custom policy, AWS managed policy. So if you create a customer managed, so we got the stop, terminate, deny. We can, what we can do is, we can attach this policy to a role. I'm going to admin, I'm attaching the policy. What policy I'm going to filter the policy it is custom managed one and I'm selecting it and I'm attaching it. Once I am attaching this policy to a server, the server can't be stopped by any users. If you give okay. if you give to the user level, we can also do this specific user should not do a stop or terminate. This is called custom policy. This is a fine grind one. We can do, we can implement this policy to all the services. In RDS, you can able to only to read, we can give. You can only to stop a server, we can give. Only able to modify some specific details, we can do. So all the restrictions can be made with the custom policies. Once a policy is generated, we can attach to the role and we can attach that role to respective service, EC2, RDS, all the service can be attached to the respective. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. Also, you so you are asked, right? So whether the cons after creating a user can be able to disable the uh, management uh, uh, console or uh, um, that uh, programmatical access to a uh, user. 
yes we can able to do okay so we can able to manage uh we can able to disable console access you saw right yes so once i apply sham can able to log in okay to this programmatic access we have option called make inactive if i done that this access key security won't work okay okay mm -hmm. we also have a additional uh, uh, security uh, part in this it is called mfa multi factor authentication okay there is a virtual mfa you if you go, go to google play you will get a google authenticator okay what it will do is every minute it will generate a six digit code okay so i am choosing a uh, there is a, if you go to uh, banking work or banking id companies what they will give is they will give a physical mfa device in the device what it will happen is every every minute it will keep on generating a six digit number if you enter the six digit, digit number into your console then only you can able to authenticate for security reason they have provided because it will change keep on changing the numbers same way you can also do in physical mfa device once you continue on that it will show a qr you if you download that uh, google authenticator in your mobile it will ask for scan the qr once you scan this this uh, your uh, user and that mfa will be synced so it will keep on generating to uh, it will keep on generating the numbers once you enter the first two number and assign mfa uh, whenever you log into console there will be another authentication called mfa once you enter that six digit only you can able to log into console itself even okay. though you have user password it will ask for mfa number once you enter the mfa number only you can able to access the console because username password can be shared if if anyone get your username password they can able to log in but if the mfa is enabled you only your mobile only will have the mfa even though username is password is shared user can't uh, the other people can log in into your console because it will ask for mfa which it will change for every minute you are from your mobile only you can able to access okay understood yes okay it is very pretty clear it is a extra layer of security for logging the console okay okay we also have a account settings in account setting what it will be, it will be there what is the maximum length of your password how many upper case should be there how many lower case should be there when the password should be expired so all the uh, to make your password more complex we can enable this for security reason okay so Uh, yes. You, yeah. Good. Uh, so this is an endpoint status uh, which we no need now. We can also go for credentials. If you download this report, it will have the all the users details in this. Okay, it is for management reason. So it will show whether the MFA enabled or not? When the password is last changed, every details there. I will show for you. I can open that out. So we have totally three users. One is a root account. One is a Pravin. One is Shyam. So when the user created password is enabled or not? When the user is now last login? What when the password last changed? So this all the information you will have why we are having this information is this is for management audit audit they will do audit when the user is last login if some user is not logging for more than 90 days we will delete the user with help of this report 
Okay. Okay. That's it. So today we we have covered about the IAMs completely. So okay. we are also we are also having few extra uh, part in IAM. So we since we complete EC two, we can able to work on that because. Uh, we, you can't understand uh, uh, without knowing other services now. We will uh, check on that later. So we, this is a, a complete IAM. So once you go into administrator part, this is a important stuff main because you are going to manage your AWS account. So you need to be uh, very keen on this IAM. Okay. Okay. So you understood all stuffs, right? Group user role policy, and also mm -hmm. how I the do. good. So Sham, okay. Uh, what you you can create a AWS account, Sham. What you do is you create a user for me for next class. You create a user for me with password restrictions, eight digit, and uh, so the password should you expire on some date. Uh, also, what we can do, okay. Uh, assign a policy uh, for me only for EC2 um, EC2 read only. Okay. Also create easy a custom policy. For me. Yeah. Create a custom policy for me. Uh, only person can uh, start the server. Should, all others should be denied. Okay. You can only stop. Or if you attach that role to the server, that server can only perform start or stop action. No other action should be performed. Termination should not be there. Okay, so you start uh, uh, see all the stuff. See if you have any doubt, we can discuss in next class. Okay. No so problem. you you can also go theoretically uh, about roles and policies. You will get more knowledge on that. We even though you discuss now, if you go theoretically, uh, you will get uh, more knowledge on that. Okay. So try to read on that. So if you have any doubts, we can discuss it next. Okay. So you are very clear in IAM right now. So you can able to create yes. a user, assign a policy to your user, create a role, assign a policy to a role, create your custom policies. So this all the stuff will be there. Yep. Okay. We can stop now, right? So first class, more than one hour, it will be very really hard for you, I guess. So we can stop now. Okay. Is that okay? Uh, can you just uh, send me a document or tell me again what I have to do with the users, like password restriction and all that? Yeah, yeah. You share, you post your email ID to group. Already we posted, I guess. I will share what task for you. And also I will share okay. the links to read go on to, okay all right okay okay i will send in another i'll refresh okay, and no i will problem. send in. yeah thanks for your time Sham. we can get tomorrow okay, thank you so tomorrow, much yeah tomorrow mostly i will try to connect soon because i'm going to my friend manage if it is late okay you i'll do the task we can connect trust early so early i'll come to, from office uh, so soon we can connect by 8 30 Okay. Yeah, no problem. That will work for me. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Yeah, bye.